And I welcome uh, members to today's meeting of the Public Accounts Committee. Members' mobile phones must be set to airplane mode and silent or turned off. It is not sufficient to put mobiles on silent mode as they continue to interfere with the Assembly recording. The session is being recorded in video and audio and can be accessed via online streaming either on Assembly website or Democracy Live. <coughs> Public session then, uh, agenda item one. Apologies, have we any apologies? And Mr Muir will be late to the meeting. Any others? No. Agenda item two. Minutes of the 24th September 2020 are pages 6 to 8. Members, the minutes of the September meeting, the 24th, are page 60 of your pack. Are you content? Can I sign those minutes? Great. Thank you. Agenda item three, declaration of members' interests. Members at each meeting, members are required to register relevant financial or other interests in the members' register of interests. Is any member any interest who wants to declare this afternoon? Uh, the chair, member of the GA. Okay, thank you. <coughs> uh, agenda item four, then, matters arising. Um, members, will, we will remain in public session. Any matters arising from those minutes? Okay. Thank you. So, agenda item five, correspondence, uh, pages twelve to thirty-one. At this stage, I would invite Mr. Kieran Donnelly, Controller and Auditor General for Northern Ireland, Mr. Rodney Allen, Director, Mr. Kyle Bingham, Assembly Support Officer, to the table. <laughs> Members, I refer to correspondence dated the 22nd of September 2020 in your pack at pages 12 to 15 from Sue Gray, Accounting Officer, Department of Finance, in relation to uh, the letter of the 14th of September requesting further information regarding the capital projects inquiry. The response outlines the details of the external uh, members of the procurement board and the cross departmental group established to develop a sector strategy for construction. Are members content? Are anyone any questions or points they want to raise on that issue? Members content? Great. Okay. Members are referred to the correspondence dated the 28th of September 2020 in your table pack from Tracy Mahar, uh, the uh, accounting officer of the Department of Communities, in response to the letter of the 14th of September 2020. Ms. Mahar has provided a fuller breakdown of the Annex 1 breakdown of the Casement Park project grant from DFC 10.5 million figure. Along with more detailed description of the items listed, any members content? Anyone any questions or queries? Mr. Hildage. Chair, sure, I think it throws up a number of queries in, in my mind anyway. And obviously, this project, I want to hear a lot more about it in the coming weeks. And I think it may, may be useful if, if the uh, accounting officer was brought back before us, maybe to have a few more questions. Or okay, Mr. Bragg, did you want to come in? I think there's a large amount of public money, and um, certainly as of yet, no, no uh, outcome. Um, so I think uh, I think it's in the public interest to know how this money has uh, been spent. Okay. Before I bring in the auditor general or any of his team, anyone anything else they want to raise on that or points they want to make? Okay. Well. Mr. Hilde is suggesting that um, Mr. Hart brought for the committee again. Um, are you seconding that, Mr. Beggs? No. Yeah. Any other counter proposals? Is that agreed? Agreed. Okay, thank you. Mr. Donnelly, Mr. Allen, Mr. Bingham, Mr. Wilkinson, you're all very welcome. Good afternoon. Thank you. Can you advise the committee if you think uh, the responses that we've had from Ms. Gray and Ms. Mahar? Uh, could alter the findings of the report? Uh, no. Um, in a nutshell, uh, I suppose uh, support 
what, what will be in your report. Mm -hmm. because the, the, this material can be appended. Okay. <clears throat> So um, the clerk will then write to Ms. Maharga asking her to uh, appear in front of the committee again to take further questions around that issue. Okay, members, I refer to correspondence dated the 23rd of September 2020 in your pack, page 16, from the Committee of Procedures on extending temporary provisions containing standing orders uh, 110 uh, to 116 until the 31st of January 2021, and a copy of the standing orders. Page 110, 116 is at pages 17 to 22 of your pack. Have any members any views on this? Are you content? Great, Chair. Okay. So, therefore, are you content that we write uh, to the Committee of Procedures? Committee for Procedures, yep. Great. Okay. Members, I refer to correspondence of the 23rd of September 2020 in your pack at pages 23 to 31 from Peter May, County Officer and Permanent Secretary, Department of Justice, in response to our letter of the 14th of September. Mr. May acknowledges that the Public Accounts Committee may request DOJ to appear with, uh, as witnesses following the publication of the Northern Ireland Audit Office Health, sorry, Mental Health Report in the new year. In the meantime, he has provided an update. <coughs> on the Northern Ireland Audit Office recommendations on its report on mental health in the criminal justice system. Are you content to note? No. Okay. Before I move on, I um, will ask the controller uh, if there is anything he wants to uh, say around that issue. No. It is actually quite a positive response. So um, it is pleasing to say there has been quite a bit of activity in response to the, the recommendation in my report. Uh, particularly better joint working between justice and health, <coughs> and uh, I suppose some initiatives that were on a pilot basis rolled out Northern Ireland wide, such as community hubs, and uh, they've moved on triage systems. So uh, they do seem to be making progress on this one. Okay, everybody okay? Okay, then agenda item six is the inquiry into the land web project and digital transformation, pages 33 to 36. Uh, at this stage, I invite Mr. Donnelly, Mr. Allen, uh, uh, Mr. Bingham to the table, and uh, Ms. Claire Doran and Ms. Christine Burns will be joining the meeting remotely. I would therefore ask uh, our witnesses to remain at each end of the table to ensure they're complying with the two metre rule. And broadcasting, can you please bring in Ms. Dolan? Ms. Burns into the meeting. And can I ask Ms. Dorn, Ms. Burns, can you see and hear us and can you um, speak that we can check and hear you? Yes, yeah. I can hear. Yes, I can hear and see. Okay, well we can we can see one of you but not the other. Um, I know. Yeah. That's okay. That happened to me in a meeting the other day. As long as you can be heard, that's more important yeah. than seeing. Okay. Thank you. Um, members, before we discuss the issues and the papers in your pack, I would refer to your draft follow-up letter to Sue Gray um, in response to the Department's evidence session last week, which is tabled in your pack. Um, to be honest, I think we all shared a view, and I think it was evident from discussions that during the workshop, uh, though I had to leave early, there were a number of issues that were not fully answered by officials. Uh, in view of this, uh, I with your permission and agreement, would propose that we would write um, to ask the uh, Permanent Secretary at the Department of Finance and uh, officials to attend another evidence session to deal with some gaps in their evidence. Uh, and the draft letter, um, which I think has been circulated, um, um, yeah, it yeah, be. Yeah, uh, refers to this and also re uh, requests additional information of a factual nature in the interim. Our members intent with the letter as appears in your pa your packs, yes? Where is, the Where is it? It should be in your tabled yeah. pack, which was issued mm. this morning. And there's... Yeah. Thank you very much. That's not the letter, that's just the next bit. Mm. <coughs> Those are some. There's some. Yeah, there's there's 
in case there's any confusion, it's the electronic table pack, not a table table pack. Um, so there's there's the letter, but there's also interim points that we questions that we want to raise as well. Uh, I think to allow us to keep moving with the inquiry. Um, <coughs> Uh, if, I'll just give members a few moments to, if they haven't read it, to read it. In addition, the evidence session, which Karen's just said, it's not. Yeah. Yeah. So, as well as the letter which you're you're now reading and inwardly digesting, um, there has been some questions have been distributed to you there that provide some opportunity for the gaps that appear in the answers that we got last year, last week, sorry, to be to be answered and, and clearly given. If members are content with those, at the end of the day, well, as I've said before. When witnesses appear in front of this committee, it's not for me from the chair to tell members what questions they should ask, but I think there were sufficiency of um, Whitehall-type answers, answers not given, answers not given a deep enough uh, response, uh, and other issues perhaps that we could have delved more into, and more searching questions that we could have asked that, that I think we could we could better ask if we had. Uh, Ms. Gray and her colleagues in front of the committee at a later date in the near future. So, in terms of the letter, are members content? Okay. Content, Chair, but I was going to add, it's not a, a deal breaker, as it were, but I wonder if, there's a, if it's worth inserting into the letter uh, an additional question about the strategic supplier work that the Permanent Secretary indicated was happening to. She seemed to. She indicated, if I'm recalling correctly, that a plan to create a strategic supplier type um, approach for the Northern Ireland Civil Service or the devolved departments was underway. I just wondered if it would be helpful to have a, to ask for clarity on that, well, unless I misremember. Yeah, um, no difficulty with that going in. But I would say that my intention is that Ms. Gray will be back to this committee Fine. in weeks, not months. Okay. And it may well be that you would want to ask her that question verbally when she's here. Um, uh, it's not because uh, 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 only, only for the clarity, but that's fine. It's, yeah. it's only the, a question of the yeah. time period. Okay, and then obviously, as I say, those those questions are there as well, and they've been put in your possession. You may well want to deploy them um, when Miss Gray and her team come. So everyone's content. We move on then. Okay. Um, do we need a proposal and secondary letter sent? No. <coughs> Members, we continue in closing closed session, um, and uh, as discussed, we've heard evidence from the. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber program signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber program signed. <laughs>